Good afternoon. How's everybody feeling today? Wonderful. Aren't you happy to see the sun? Thank God. So um, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Cheryl Blue, and I am the executive director of the 30th Street Industrial Corridor Corporation and Bid 37. And we are co-hosting this event today with Kothi Dance Company. And today, May 5th, 2019, is actually Kothi's 50th birthday. So let's, let's give that a round of applause. Yes. May 5th, 20, 1969, is when the company was founded. And just so that you all know, there are very few African dance companies in the world, even in Africa, that have reached a milestone to be 50 years old. So it is a tremendous milestone, Milwaukee's own Kothi Dance Company. And um, as I'm also the, on the board of Kothi, and so with the corridor, we're talking economic development. It only makes sense to talk about the role of art in economic development. Um, so just to give you all a little context, the 30th Street Corridor runs from Highland to Hampton, basically 27th to 35th, which is the industrial corridor of the city. Um, Mr. Benson, thank you for hosting us. This building here is in the 30th Street Corridor as well. And so our mission is to revitalize the 30th Street Corridor. At one point, this area of Milwaukee had one of the strongest manufacturing corridors in the world, in the world. and. Because of that manufacturing corridor, many uh, black people, many people migrated to Milwaukee. That's the reason why they came here, because they could get really good jobs um, and live here in Milwaukee. And that's why the neighborhoods built up around the 30th Street Corridor also for housing for the people that worked in this area. And so, of course, you know, A.O. Smith and all of these companies left. And so the, the area has, kind of, has went down in a lot of ways. And the goal of our organization is to revitalize this area of the city because, again, it can be a top manufacturing corridor in the world um, as well as the community. So when I came into this position, economic development is traditionally bricks and mortar. How are we going to get these buildings in and things like that? I grew up right here. My parents live about five blocks from here. I used to, I tell Mr. Benson all the time, I grew up in this library when this was the 20, the library here, the Center Street Library. I lived in this library and I'm so grateful that you have transformed the space into this beautiful place here. Um, but people, they didn't think about the people. They think about bricks and mortar. And so coming from the community, I understand that we have to, um, so we have to talk about revitalizing the people as well. And so the 30 Street Corridor, we've been working in garden homes. We've been working with community groups. And part of our mission is to facilitate discussions like this because you have to engage people, you have to talk, we have to build the institutions that are going to revitalize this community. And art is a critical, critical part of revitalizing the community. So it's a very timely topic um, that, we, that we're going to um, be discussing today. I wanted to acknowledge um, board members. Dr. Patrick Belgar Smith is here. I think he's the only part. Oh, no, he isn't. Elmer Moore. Also, uh, Fidel Verdeen are all members of the Kothi uh, Board of Directors, and we are very busy um, preparing and executing our 50th anniversary. I also want to acknowledge Julia Taylor, who's here, who along with President Ashanti Hamilton are the co-chairs for our 50th anniversary celebration this year. Can you all give all of them a round of applause, please? I also want to introduce D'Antrium King. He's our outreach specialist for the 30th Street Corridor. Um, he is my right hand and my left hand. He's also in law school at Marquette uh, University right now. And um, so at this time, I wanted to introduce uh, Damar Walker, who is the Associate Artistic Director for Kofi Dance Company. One of the things that Mama Fern did that a lot of people don't do is to train her replacement, okay? A lot of organizations, they just, they come and go with a personality, but our, DeMar can introduce the rest of the team, but there's a very solid team that Kothi has for moving forward. And so 
As we talk about economic development, as we talk about Kothi celebrating 50 years, I want you to meet the new leadership of Kothi, but also very honestly talk about how do we save this institution? How do we make it thrive for the future? How do we support artists and art organizations in this city? So at this time, I'm gonna invite Damar up to say a few words. Hey everyone, how you doing? So it's a pleasure to be here on this Sunday afternoon with this beautiful weather. As Ms. Cheryl said, my name is Damar Walker. I am the artistic director of Kothi Dance Company. And before I actually go into my spiel about Kothi, I want to make sure I acknowledge uh, my team. I want to acknowledge Kumasi Allen, the musical director, in the cut back there. What's up, Kumasi? <laughs> I also want to acknowledge uh, Sonia Thompson. She's not here. She is the Associate Artistic Director. She popped in earlier, but can we give it up for Sonia, please? And I wouldn't be standing here, and I wouldn't be able to acknowledge the people who I work with if it weren't, if it weren't for one person, yeah? So I would like everyone to please give a rousing, a rousing round of applause for the founder of our our beloved organization that turned 50 today, Fern Calker. Can y'all give it up for her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I also want to make sure that we acknowledge our director of operations in the back, Sarah Hamilton. Can we, Sarah? And as I'm just going through the line, let me acknowledge David Overbeck, too, our videographer, too. <laughs> so everyone, uh, I, want, I know everyone wants to get straight into the panel, but I just want to make sure that uh, we acknowledge a few things. You are in the middle of a lecture series that the company is hosting. This is the third of five, yeah? So this is the role of art and economic development being hosted today here at the Wisconsin Black Historical Society. On May 21st, we have African Spirituality from here to Wakanda with our board member, Dr. Belgard Smith. He'll be hosting that lecture on May 21st. That'll be at the Village Square Library from 6 to 7.30. So we would love for you to come out. And the next one is on July 16th, Race and Color in Latin America and the Caribbean with also Dr. Belgard Smith. That will be held at the Mitchell Street Library from 6 to 7.30. So we would love to have you in attendance, bring some people with you, yeah? Please support us, yeah? On top of all of that, if you flip over, for those who don't have this, but if you, if you do, this is all culminating to our anniversary weekend, which is happening August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 9th, and 10th. On those days, we will have our Jubilee concert. We are in full concert mode like full concert mode. This week, this week has been a lot. <laughs> it's, been, it's been chaotic at times, but it's been so impactful and meaningful. Um, literally from, we had a performance Friday night. We had a beautiful, beautiful ceremony with our, our kids um, Saturday. Um, we also had a master class and we had a party last night and we're here today, yeah? So we got a lot going on. But this is culminating to August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 9th. We got our Jubilee concerts those days, and then we will have our anniversary gala and party on the 10th. So if you can come out and support us, that would be greatly appreciated. We would love to have you in attendance. We got something super duper special planned for you during that time. I keep telling my people um, who I work with that we're going to uh, get some people free this summer. So. If you come out, you'll be able to experience all this goodness and greatness, all right? So, thank you, everybody. Everyone that's on the panel, y'all got it, all right? Ms. Cheryl, thank you, everyone. At this time, we're gonna have our board member, Elmer Moore, to speak to you further about COVID. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So you know what it means when the guy wearing the sport coat shows up, right? 
No, thank you for asking. Thank you. So what we've heard already is that Kothi is extraordinary because it is almost unique internationally as an African dance company that's turning 50 years old. I want to double down on that. I want to triple down on that. It is also just a dance company that's turning 15 year, 50 years old, which is nearly unique. Oh, and by the way, it is a, uh, an organization operated by black folks, which is 50 years old. So the relationship between all those qualifiers, African dance, dance, black, it is not additive. It is actually exponential. So black times African dance, right, times dance is incalculable. And I mention that only because we really need to take very seriously how enormous an achievement this moment is. And we have to take very seriously our responsibility to assure that we're going to have another one of these in another 50 years. And so in order for us to do that, in order for us to really have a successful conversation about the role of arts and economic development, we've got to be sure that we support the arts with our economics. And so I'm inviting you all today to be a part of Kothi's history moving forward by allowing us to secure a financial foundation that lets this organization thrive. And so I'm going to show you what I would love for you to do. Option A is you go to the website ko-thi.org and you follow along and you find the button that says donate here and you do what you're supposed to do there. Option B is you go to the back and you grab an envelope and you write your name on it and you stuff some stuff inside of it and you take it home and you put a check inside and then you mail it in. Option three, follow along. You take the stuff out of your pocket, right? And you fold it. And you walk it over to this box. Watch how it goes. Watch how, so simple. All right. There you go. Oh, and I, you know what? I want to show, I want to show everybody how to do both parts. So I, you saw that one. Then you take the envelope because I'm going to need this for later on. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to write a check. I'm going to write a note. And I'm going to say, blessings. I'm going to mail this in. And we're going to be prepared to have this celebration again. You know, let's, let's do another one in 10 years. I don't want to make you all wait for 50. Right? OK, we'll do another one in 10 years. Can we do that, Mama Fern? So very seriously, y'all, this is important. This, was, this is important. I don't want to root you or anchor you in the ne negative, but let's just imagine for a moment if we let this organization slip away. We can't do that. I don't want to imagine a Milwaukee without Kofi. Thank you. I look forward to seeing y'all in 5 and 10, 15, 20, 25, and in August. Thank you, Damar. Look forward to seeing y'all soon. Thank you, Mama Cheryl. Thank you. OK. So at this time, we're going to um, start with the panel. So I'm going to ask all of the panelists to please come on stage and have a seat. And Deantrium is going to introduce all of our panelists. There's, there's, there's. So, um, what was I going to say? Please donate. Please tell your friends to donate. Like Kofi on Facebook and Instagram. Um, join our mailing list um, because we have to build up this campaign. 
Um, what we know is with the current administration in Washington, there is not a lot of support for the arts. Um, and so we have to do this. We have to do this together as a community um, to support our artists in this city. Okay, so Dee is going to introduce our panelists and our facilities. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again for coming out tonight. So before we begin, I'd like to introduce our panelists for the evening. Fidel Verdeen is a visionary artist and social entrepreneur. Fidel has received national and local recognition for his many achievements, including a creative placemaking award from Groundwork Milwaukee for his urban agricultural work, helping to found the Peace Park and Garden. Fidel is an award-winning film and music producer, widely known for launching Summer of Peace, an annual event focused on conflict resolution and youth leadership. Fidel currently serves as co-executive director of True School, Inc. and Milwaukee Center for Creative Arts and Hip Hop Culture. Next, I'll introduce Mr. George Sucrose. Mr. Sucrose is the executive director of the Wisconsin Arts Board, a state agency which nurtures creativity, cultivates expression, promotes the arts, supports the arts in education, and stimulates community and economic development. Mr. Sucos works with the creative industries, Wisconsin Arts Board's members and staff, the corridor, the governor, and state legislator to create funding, programs, and services to meet the needs and the people of Wisconsin. Next, we have Mr. Elmer Moore, Jr. Elmer Moore is a former dancer, artist, entrepreneur and executive and director of economic development initiative of the greater milwaukee committee scale up milwaukee scale up uses entrepreneurial growth to advance inclusive economic prosperity by offering programming and training for business owners looking to scale up elmer founded milwaukee denim company and teaches entrepreneurship at marquette university he earned a BA from Moldenburg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and an MBA from Columbia Business School in New York City. Next, we have Ms. Julia Taylor. Ms. Taylor was appointed as president of the Greater Milwaukee Committee in 2002. Ms. Taylor's work helped to promote collaboration on regional issues and opportunities through its initiatives in innovation and talent, economic prosperity, and vibrancy of peace. It acts as the creator of on initiatives like Teach Tile MKE, Scale Up Milwaukee, and other creative outlets throughout the city. Before coming to the GMC, Ms. Taylor was president of the YWCA of Greater Milwaukee for 16 years. She currently serves on the board of the United Performing Arts Fund, Milwaukee Film, and other organizations throughout the city. Next, we have Ben Barber. Ben Barber is the curator and operations manager at the Milwaukee County Historical Society. He also serves as Vice President of the Board of Directors of the Wisconsin Federation of Museums. Ben has a master's degree in public history from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where he wrote his thesis on the history of jazz in Milwaukee. Last but not least, we have Ms. Fern Calker. Ms. Fern Calker is the founder and artistic executive director of the Code Feed Dance Company Wisconsin's oldest African-American arts organization. Kothi was founded in 1969 and is dedicated to the preservation and expression of the performing arts from the African continent, Caribbean, and the U.S. She taught at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee since 1971, where she was a full professor in the Peck School of Arts Dance Department. She is particularly interested in the relationship between arts training and exposure increased self-esteem, and social behavior. Ms. Calker has served on many panels, including the NEA and WAB. She has also served on the board of directors of the Wisconsin Arts Board as well. And I'd like to introduce you all to our one of the panelists for the evening. Thank you. But, all right, this is good. Um, we have a gathering of a lot of great, great, great minds in Milwaukee here today. And as it was already stated, thank you very much for being here to participate. Um, this is definitely not just for observation 
as you sit here, um, think about how you can input or any questions or comments you may want to have um, as we go into this. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here, and I'm in a lot of conversations with a lot of great minds around the city, some of them in this room, um, that we've been thinking about these conversations for years and years in terms of economic development and, and, and creating some stimulus, if you will, into, this, into the city, period. And so when you talk about a lot of different things and then at the, at the, at the curve of the conversation, there's art and there's creativity and there's culture, mm -hmm. right? A different conversation that a lot of times not at the forefront when you're talking about economic development or neighborhood revitalization not necessarily the first thing that come out in the, in, in the conversation. Um, and, and a lot of you know that, especially from a city level, um, where people like to expect to think, get things done or move things forward, um, that's not one of the first places where they start, right? So I just wanna also say that this is incredibly timely, as Cheryl said, uh, of a conversation, because this is where the innovation happens, this is where people who color outside the lines and think forward and, and, and think about what has not been done before, later for tradition. We're not here to talk about everything that's happened. We're not here to talk about problems. We're not here to complain. We're here as creative thinkers and problem solvers. Because if we're talking about economic development and prosperity, we got some problems that need to be solved. We got some challenges that need to be addressed, right? Yeah. And if we are artists, then let's have some fun. Right? Because right. if it ain't no fun involved, I, I, as an artist, I don't know how many artists that really want to be involved for too long. If it ain't going to be fun, I don't want none. All right? So get right into it. This is a very important session. Again, um, one of the conversations I keep hearing about um, as we stand and sit inside of a museum, a historical museum, a preservation museum, you look around, it's all about artwork. You look in the other room, it's about art and sculpture and, and, and cultivating. Uh, I'm capturing culture, preserving history. Um, I'm in a conversation last week at the Milwaukee Art Museum downtown, and the, the, the conversation is about how do you get community outreach and people who may not be of the traditional museum patronage to come to the art museum. They, it's business. It's a business conversation. So the same way we're in an art museum right now, Mr. Benson, thank you again, because this is business. Right? So keep the lights on here. It's a business. So I don't want to derail too far, but consider this facility for your future business. All right? Your future meetings. All right? Support this facility as we talk about sustaining arts and development. All right. That was a brief intro on top of the intro. <laughs> Where you are. Okay. So now, you know, I, I like to really think big level when we're talking about these things. Again, if we're talking about solving problems, economic development, let's start big. Let's start big, and we'll figure it out, and we'll figure it out, and we'll get down to it. So I want you to you know, take some notes if you need to and think about how we can follow up on this conversation after today as well. It's not just a pop-up, one-time conversation, people. Now, we're thinking about statewide for a second. Think about Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin Black Historical Society Museum we sit in, not Milwaukee. All right, so let's just go out a little bit. Let's think big a little bit. So thinking about the statewide on a statewide level, if we focused in on um, cultural organizations, it's a lot of impact that we could think about that, that our uh, cultural and arts organizations facilitate. A lot of impact. But what I want to know is, and I guess in no particular order, I guess you all can figure out how you want to bounce the conversation around. Um, from your perspective, um, what are the local assets that we have, including like the rural areas in Wisconsin? Okay. Going back a little bit, thinking about a little bit of bird's eye view, what are the assets that you can say that we really have that would help to amplify the creative economy that already exists, but then also, what do we have that could help us create and, 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 and start that which does not exist here? <laughs> He's got all so, the data. again, from the perspective of the State Arts Agency, um, we are rich. I think so as well. We are rich in what we have in our state, whether it's the urban neighborhoods or the rural areas. Um, you know, 
uh, we have what you would call the traditional arts in the sense of um, music, theater, dance, the visual arts. But we also have traditional in the sense of the communication of culture. Um, and people across the state who are keeping traditions alive from wherever they came from before they came to Wisconsin, or from the native traditions who are already here. Um, so th those two pieces are existing. Um, the good news is that communities, and this is where it's beautiful, when you get down to the localist of local levels, people are supporting culture because it's their friends and it's their neighbors who are taking the opportunity to communicate what they're all about. And so they're much more willing to give to that person who they see across the way from them, mm -hmm. who they meet at the grocery store, et cetera. Um, and so I think it's really important to note the fact that there are groups that are working statewide, like the Arts Board, like Arts Wisconsin, to weave things together. But I, I was saying to Fern before, there's this notion of uh, we're Johnny Appleseeds of stories and numbers. So the, the stories are, we meet you at a meeting like this, and you tell me about something that you're doing, and the next time I'm in another community, I tell that story to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we're connecting one another. The, the one other thing I'll, I'll say before I leave this about, about is, the arts plays such a significant role above and beyond the economics in our state. It's introducing us together as human beings, us together in our cultures, new people who come to our state, we have many recent immigrants who have to understand what is this thing Wisconsin's all about and vice versa. And I'll, I'll just reflect back on a story from the past where Kothi was out on the road in Northeast Wisconsin. <coughs> the people of Northeast Wisconsin hadn't seen black people, um, and they hadn't, and now Kothi is the ambassador not only as dance, an African dance, but as people. And right. making that connection with people who will say, ah, I get it now, I understand this cultural mm -hmm. connection. So the economy is based on that really firm foundation. And I guess I'll leave it there. I do think there's not a lot of connection between what's often called urban and rural continuum in terms of our mm -hmm. creative place making. I think probably the closest area I've seen it come is, uh, if anybody's ever been to Fermentation Fest in Reedsburg, with the Worm Farm Institute, and they are trying to connect more with Milwaukee. Uh, and they've done a lot in that community to use art. I mean, truly creativity to, to really bring what would be a community that's actually still struggling right now for a lot of dairy farms that they're losing, but to kind of bring their community together. And I think that in, in areas like this, we have a lot of recognizable assets, like you were mentioning about the art museum, but we also have a lot of community-based assets that are creative-based, that are not as recognized, that are really important for pulling community together. Because a lot of times what is heard is community voice. And to have a gathering related to art, to music, to dance, that brings people together, that creates that sense to get to know each other, to build relationships, one of my favorite things is that change occurs at the speed of trust. And I think mm -hmm. art at its core brings people together for the relationships to begin a sense of trust and to have the harder dialogues in the dialogue. Nice. Um, um, I would like to say ahead. something about that too. I, I love what you just said about um, what you just said about trust. Um, because I, I go back, I think, um, well, 50 years Kofi, but it's really like eight years before that. It's been about 58 years in the, working in the state. And I remember as a young woman um, having an opportunity to go and teach in Door County with the migrant workers. And prior to that, I was a child that had just come out of the 60s movement, where everything was very centered around being black. I'm black and I'm proud. That was the movement that was around me. And then, so everything that I did and I thought about was centered around people who looked like me. And then I went up to Door County and worked with migrant children. And I suddenly realized that this is a human issue. It's a human issue. That each ethnic group has their story to tell, but it's also about humanity and how we relate one to another. And that changed my whole concept. And, and, and really fortify 
what I wanted to become as a, as a dancer because I did, it fortified my strength to do what I was doing about my story, but it opened up my eyes to understand that there were other stories. And to me, that's, that's, that's such a gift to give a young person who is in a box and can't see beyond their box. So that was important. So. Absolutely, and there's a lot of boxes and bubbles um, in this environment, and art helps us to break out of those comfort zones. One of the things that came across um, recently, my, my, my radar, this Arts and Economic Prosperity Report. If you have not seen it, it's available. You can just Google it. Arts and Economic Prosperity Report in Wisconsin. It was done by America for the Arts. Um, it's been circulating for a while. It was actually conducted in 2015, but it's some pretty um, interesting information in there. Um, there's a couple quotes that was on the slideshow that was rotating that uh, earlier that was planned. And some of it related to the arts and culture sec sector, the nonprofit sector, and how much revenue, um, how many jobs created, how much money gets um, generated in terms of events and audience spending and visitors and traffic from tourism and things like that. So if that's your industry and that's your business, it's something you might want to check out and look into. Um, one of the things that stated in there was that the state of Wisconsin had a $9.1 billion um, value added from the arts economy in 2015. And so that's pretty significant. It's not a small dollar. And there's a lot of different breakdowns in there of, of how that number came to be and a lot of other pretty significant numbers that jumped out at me. Um, and I'll just read a quick quote that was in there um, and see if we could, um, I think that was it, see, see if we can play off of some of this. It says, um, understanding and acknowledging the incredible economic impact of the nonprofit arts and culture, we must always remember their fundamental value. They foster beauty, creativity, originality, and vitality. The arts also inspire us, soothe us, provoke us, involve us, and connect us, but they also create jobs and contribute to the economy. So that's something to always remember, and that's the CEO or the people who did the, the uh, study, actually his quote, but it's also something to remember when we think about you know, the, the Center for Performing Arts or we think about the City of Festival and all the arts and entertainment that may be tied into things. And you think about art galleries and people go for experiences and it's kind of a pass-through experience. But there's a lot of other things attached to the business of it. Um, and I was just wondering on that level if anybody could chime in on the aspect of where do the arts and culture sector fit in or where do you see it fitting in in terms of neighborhood development and the explosion of development that's happening downtown in Milwaukee currently. Um, where do you see arts playing a role in intersecting um, some of that revitalization and development? Well, I, I got something. Go <laughs> <laughs> Oops, that's all right. Um, wow, all these men helping me with the mics. <laughs> Is this symbolic of the future? <laughs> Never That's mind, hope. hope floats. Um, well, I think it, for me it has a lot to do with, you know, the key word that you said was neighborhoods and sustaining what we call quality of life in a neighborhood. And um, what we often forget when we talk about jobs and econ the economy, et cetera, is that the people who create, for example, dance, Kofi, is that these young people actually work four or five other jobs mm -hmm. so they can do this job, which they can't live off of. But this is the job that actually where their gift is. Mm -hmm. So the problem we're having, I think, in neighborhoods with my folk is that we are so, the, the community is so detached from the concept of a child and its gift or their gift, and how we take, how we fortify the gift, how we strengthen the gift, so that they then, it's a circular breath that comes back into the community. And we're missing out a lot when we do all of this development. When I go downtown and I see all of the development and I see what's happening, you know, downtown Brewers Hill, where did all those potential gifts go? Because they're not down there. They're now on 175th you know, 94th and Brown Deer Road, where the only transportation they have 
to connect to the museums and everything is a bus route. So the poverty has moved outside of the downtown area and moved way out into the suburbs where there's nothing there for them. So we now have a crisis, I think, of gifts, mm. un, you know, unfulfilled gifts that are sitting somewhere out there in Neverland while we're building these wonderful um, centers of excess that are not feeding the gifts for the future. Piggybacking off of what uh, Mama Fern said, I work um, here with a lot of businesses, uh, Business Improvement District number 37, and one of the top issues for employers is the, the condition of the workforce, um, the stability of the workforce. And I believe that it's about what is being cultivated in the inner city. Okay, so like I said, I grew up right down the street, 53206. I graduated from North Division High School. Um, we had almost everybody on our block owned their homes. Um, we had great teachers from the community. I was able to go to college. I didn't need remedial courses. But in the course of 20 to 30 years, the school system has been totally gutted. You have uh, children who graduate, like they literally have a high school diploma and they cannot read. Um, they don't know their timetables and things like that. And so when we talk about art and what it does for children and youth, because again, North Division, we had Miss Skorowski, we had you know, wonderful choir, we had Nefertari dancers, we had the beautiful murals, you know, a lot of Amaris artists all throughout the city. And these things are not being cultivated. You know, there's more talk of the negatives about, um, you know, the incarceration rate, all these negative statistics about Milwaukee. And we spend a lot of time on studies and these type of things instead of really investing in the people and the children. The arts programs are being cut in the schools um, and things like that. And again, art is what creates well-rounded individuals who have that inspiration to move forward. I wanted to read a quote um, from Felicia Rashad. She said, before a child talks, they sing. Before they write, they draw. As soon as they stand, they dance. Art is fundamental to human expression. And so when we talk about revitalizing the communities, again, it can't be just bricks and mortar. We have to invest in the people. Milwaukee is, has the um, largest population under 18 in the United States. Milwaukee is the youngest blackest city in the United States. We have all of these children. What are we putting into them? What are we cultivating in them? It's a very serious issue. It is a very serious issue, and it's about um, imagination, creativity, and innovation. Mm -hmm. In the 21st century, that's what it's all about. Uh, right. And we are involved in a national organization called the National Creativity Network with Sir Ken Robinson. If you've ever seen his TED talk, you know who I'm speaking about. If you haven't, go see it. Um, but Sir Ken says something. He says, you know, the kids who enter kindergarten this year will exit in 2068. Right? Does anybody know what 2068 looks like? Mm -hmm. And the reason for raising the question is, without imagination, creativity, and innovation, those kids are not prepared. You know, there's often a conversation about a skills gap. The skills, that, the skills gap is only growing over time because kids are not taught the basic pieces that they need to adapt to the society as it is going forward. So that's one piece. Investment in kids is another economic question. Yes. Um, and then finally, I think the arts have this really important role to play in, as you were saying, about quality of place. Richard Florida called it quality of place. What's there? the natural and the built environment, who's there, looking for a diverse population of creative people, and what's going on there. And those things are important to the state of Wisconsin, to Milwaukee, and to other places for retaining and attracting the quality entrepreneurs and skilled workers that are necessary for the 21st century and beyond. So, so another piece, we will talk more about what we should do to invest in the arts. 
but that investment in the arts is only because we're investing in our communities, mm -hmm. in our children, in our place. Mm -hmm. So the, the only thing I want to add to that is, uh, you know, if we look at where this all started. Actually, if we look at sociologists and anthropologists, uh, they go digging up, you know, things and fields and, and, and so on. The stuff that they pull out, it, it's called an artifact, right? So we have to remember that the arts is, is more than entertainment. Um, it's, it's actually a way of materializing a history, a moment in time, memorializing how things came to be and what things happened. Um, it's also a way to understand in real time what's happening, right? It's the way you metabolize. Uh, so it's a record, it's a, it's a process, uh, it's a celebration, and it's a way of self-expression. And so as we talk about the role of arts in, in community and neighborhoods, you know, we don't have to look 3,000 years ago uh, in, in the motherland where how you danced was how you introduced yourself. Like, I come from Baltimore, and I grew up listening to different music than you all did, right? Uh, in Baltimore, there's a kind of club music that only exists in Baltimore. There are dances to go with that club music. If I saw you doing them in a dark club in New Jersey or California, I would yell at you, what? Right? So the role of arts is, is, is way of cementing yourself in a, in a place, um, in a time, and also within a community. Right, and I think it's always important. You know, we can think about music, we can think about things like, um, certainly, certainly in hip hop, whether it's graffiti, whether, and graffiti, by the way, is just visual art done illegally, right? Uh, if we look at all these kind of aesthetic styles, they're just the ways that we use to express ourselves, where we come from, who we are belonging to. Um, and I think we just have to find more ways to nurture that in people. It's okay if somebody who lives in the Amani neighborhood wants to sing a different way than somebody who lives in Washington Heights or River West. We should maybe encourage that. And then we all come together and we're like, okay, what do they sound like where you come from? And then all of a sudden, Milwaukee starts to have an aesthetic, which is a blend, right? It's a potpourri. And then Wisconsin starts to have a sound and the Midwest starts to have a sound and a look and a feel. And in 50 years from now, when we come back together for the Kothis, you know, century, we talk about how we are blending uh, ancient African movement with vintage Milwaukee movement to create something that is specifically and expressly to record that moment. So that's how I think arts works in the neighborhood. Yes. Don't get me started about that conversation. <laughs> right now, at least. That's another panel. All right. <laughs> Everybody just got that. That's right. That's right. That's a whole, that's a, that's a whole other panel for a whole other day. You got me stomping my feet up here, Julia. Keep it moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. But what I'm going to say is that I don't know if anybody's been any of the pop-up stores around North Avenue. And there's some in Cesar Chavez. I mean, part of what we've been looking at is what sometimes looks like a detriment is a real asset. So there's a lot of vacant storefronts. Mm -hmm. The ability to turn those around and make those homes for people who are creative, who, who have mm -hmm. something really unique, like you were talking about Elmer, to their neighborhood or to themselves, to bring it there. And these places are going great runs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know one was doing 10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and it's just this 
Great point. So, so I would be, I would not be doing my job. Go ahead. If I didn't also mention, we have to be careful using the word we and also not holding ourselves accountable. Uh, we also have to spend money on, on the things we care about, right? Um, and I'm, you know, listen, I don't have all the money, but I'm deliberate in, in how I choose to, to use my money. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm selfish about it. I want to surround myself with things that I love. I want to be in spaces that I enjoy. I want to see things that I like. I want to eat things that taste good. And I have to be deliberate about making sure that the things that I believe need to continue existing, um, I give my, my time, I give my energy, and I give part of my finances. So uh, with that said, you know, if we want to have conversations like this in 50 years, Got him going. Um, I got a tag off of that. Um, because I have to talk about a woman who, whose shoulders I stand on. And her name was Catherine Duncan. Hey now. And I have to take a minute to say to everybody that this woman had the first African American dance company in the United States that was professional and toured not only in the United States doing Jim Crow, but she took the company all over Europe. And many people that you know, names like, well, maybe you don't, but you know, Eartha Kitt, and I can go on down the list of a lot of people, Harry Belafonte, a lot of them danced with her, believe it or not. And fast forward, this woman died almost in complete poverty. Her museum, which was supposed to have been placed, well, people wanted it in Paris, they wanted it in New York, they wanted it in LA, and she chose East St. Louis because of the same conversation we're having right now about economics and how we make arts relevant to people who need it. And so she put her museum in East St. Louis. And within two years, it was dead. Mm. Catherine Dunham came here, and I'm gonna share this memory, and then I won't talk about it anymore, because it's too painful. She came here to Milwaukee, brought by the Milwaukee um, Museum, some years back. She wanted her hair braided, so one of my dancers, Felicia, and I went, had the honor to spend a day with her, because she wanted special little braids. So we took all day. And we're sitting in the hotel, and she's lying on the bed. I have a picture of it. And her underwear had holes in it. She did not have even the wardrobe that she needed because she gave everything up because of the cause of dance and knowledge and history. And I am sitting here with a dance company that's 50 years old that is struggling to stay alive. And I'm saying to myself, that was Catherine. And now it's me, I don't have holes in my drawers. <laughs> but, well, you don't know that though, do you? <laughs> you see. So, I mean, at what point, what is it that we have to do for the artists, my artists, I'm gonna just get personal here for a second. For them to receive pay, not make millions, just pay for what they do. And for them to have a masseuse to go to when their legs are hurting, 
or a doctor to go. A lot of them don't have health insurance. A dancer without health insurance? That's ridiculous. So these are the things that have to change if we're going to build the institutions that we're talking about and if we're going to actually take care of those, nurture those gifts. And that's why we're doing what we're doing, Julia and Alma and all of us on the board. And that's why this panel is here, because I'm concerned about how long does this pattern, because it's now becoming insanity to say that you want to be a dancer in Milwaukee a black dancer in Milwaukee is insane. Wow. I'll let you sit with that for a second. Um, so a lot of great points have been raised today on the 50th anniversary birthday, 50th on the 5th today. Um, Kothi has a lot of a lot, a lot of history, as you all already know. And in, in talking about history, you all are like summing up where the conversation and hitting questions and topics before I can get there. A lot of poetry on the, on the panel tonight. I don't know if y'all picking up on the bars, but, but um, there are a lot of great um, solutions that I'm hearing in, in, inside of a lot of the conversation. So, you know, the way you ended Mama Fern about in Milwaukee specifically, like, there's this pattern that, that goes on. So artists, you know, are very much wanderers and travelers and seekers and discoverers. And I I'm, I'm know that a lot of you all in here and probably on the panel have been to a lot of other places, seen a lot of other things. Um, and as we bring it into like solutions and what can work and what we could share and in part with each other as almost, you know, a possibility of a project or something to do or an action or a thing that we could build on. Um, I just want to ask you if anybody could share any, any things that you maybe have seen in your travels or, or practices or principles that tie in. I'm talking real resources to individual artists. I'm talking about real um, uh, infrastructural uh, uh, support and, and sustainable support to small groups and grassroots organizations. I'm talking like how do you connect the city projects that happen with the university projects that happen with the neighborhood projects that happen. I'm talking like have you all seen anything that, that that you think is really awesome in, and that, that could work in Milwaukee um, as we're talking about the role that arts plays in economic development specifically. We out of the fluffiness, we're talking about developing economics specifically. Is there anything that you all could think of um, that may have worked? Or if you just got some brilliant idea of something that could work here um, that we have not seen before, let's just put it on the table. and. and um, see what our people think about it. I want to start with the young man that has said nothing today. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a little out of my league here um, because I, I'm a historian and not necessarily involved in the arts. Um, and so I could speak historically and say that uh, in Milwaukee specifically and, and in other cities, um, we, we've talked about economic development and, and manufacturing and all that. Interestingly, the, uh, the factories, the Allen Bradleys, the uh, A.O. Smiths, in the 40s, 50s, they had arts programs in-house. Mm -hmm. And this was something to uh, basically improve the conditions of their workers. Mm -hmm. They wanted their workers to be happy, because happy workers make better products and make more money for the company. And so they saw how important it was to infuse the arts in the everyday life of, of the, their workers. Skirt! Y'all heard that? <laughs> I'm not just gonna let you just glaze over that right quick. That's pretty significant. And if you're involved in any sort of industry, if you're involved in any sort of business, if you're involved in anything that's related to management a lot of a lot of workers who produce a lot of outcomes, that's a jewel right there. Creating some sort of art therapy, creating some sort of art release, some sort of art program. Um, okay, keep going, sorry. And this is important because we got away from that, right? That's right. Uh, as, as people started you know, having to, to watch the bottom line, the companies started tightening up on everything, the budgets went south, and then deindustrialization and, and, and manufacturing fell apart in Milwaukee. The first thing to cut, and you see it in the schools too, the first thing to cut is the arts, yeah. right? But it's clear from this gathering and from the people that are here that, that the arts are fu fundamental to us as human beings and that it 
would only make sense that fostering the arts is somehow going to make everybody a better person, a better worker, more creative, and therefore drive the economy. As for answers, I don't have them, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an awesome example though. And that's what we're looking for, awesome examples. And if that was possible back then for factories that none of you ever thought of in terms of embracing art, you thought of them providing an economic engine for communities and for a lot of families that work, but how many knew they was probably in the back doing clay sculptures or something, right? That's amazing. Any other examples? I was just going, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, we're located in the former Eaton building on 27th and Hope, and they were flooded, and so they left. They, they use that as an excuse to leave, honestly. <laughs> and they left everything, and there's beautiful art all throughout that building that they just left there on the wall, so I just wanted to mention that. But also, um, I believe that that is why these types of discussions are important, talk, because we have to raise the consciousness of the people um, in this city, you know, a lot of the kids go to school that they don't see art, it's not explained to them. They haven't been taken on tours to see art throughout the city, um, and it's just not in their consciousness. And so, while sometimes it seems tedious, it's important to gather, to have conversations, to stimulate um, conversation. And then also, I would say that because arts funding has been cut, it's a different game than it was, you know, 40, 50 years ago. There isn't generally, you know, sometimes you can find a, a benefactor, but a company isn't gonna just last based on a, a grant. You have to build your audience, you know, person by person, touch, touches by touches, and, and so that you build your audience and your donors and things like that. That's how it happens. It's slow, it's tedious, it's relationship building over time, but that's the way that you build your audience and your foundation through building relationships and gatherings with people and having discussions across um, different walks of life. So in, any other best practices or things from different cities? Because you know when they do studies like this and they do like surveys, they're always talking about what happens in other cities and what they did in Kalamazoo and what worked in Paris or what have you, right? And then you bring that back home. And sometimes it works, sometimes, sometimes it fits. Um, a couple of places, one in Fitchburg, Wisconsin, there's a company called Promega, which is a life sciences company, which has a gallery a number of times a year, they curate exhibitions for their employees and for the public. And why would a life science company care about that? Because ultimately, the creativity that they hope for out of their scientists mm -hmm. is being inspired by the creativity they bring in by the artists. Mm -hmm. You have a conversation of a piece that you see that has nothing to do with what you were working on that day, <laughs> except it has everything to do because it makes you think different. Mm -hmm. Here in Milwaukee, of course, you have Northwestern Mutual. They have Wisconsin artists and everybody else in their space. Why would an insurance company care about art? They care about it, again, to inspire their employees. The one last thing I'll say before I, I turn it up is to say, I, I, as an arts person, want everybody to say when anybody says what you said, which is exactly right. The first thing to go to the arts, the next time somebody says that to you, say, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Because in the 21st century, when we want our kids to be less obese, we cut physical education. Okay. <laughs> when we want them to be more literate, we cut the library. <laughs> and we want them to be more creative, we cut the art. <laughs> and that's, that's got to stop. And, and to say we're going to go back, I'm not that kind of person. I don't say we're going to go back to the good old days when there was an art teacher in every building, whatever, whatever. But where it's different, where we can come together now is if we gather around the notion of creativity. The science teachers, the math teachers, the arts teachers, all of these teachers come together and talk about creativity. The school is going to be relevant in the 21st century in a way it's not right now. Because in many schools, it's still set up for the industrial age. Right. You put the kid in on this end, by the time they come out on the other end, we hope that they're going to be good witches. Yeah. That's not what we need. Milwaukee's not a kind one for artists, especially for thinking 
you know, a livelihood at it. I mean, tell all the other people know. You get, okay, then often you get more appreciated outside of town mm -hmm. than you are in town. Right? Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the things, you know, you, you see this at community levels. Grand Rapids is a great example with the Art Prize where they get, they give away, I think it's a half a million dollars or something for the top prize. And they, they draw artists from all over the place and they really, it's just really not a very big town. It's elevating mm -hmm. art to a, a whole different part of the identity of the community. Uh, Detroit, I think, has done a great job. They also have the Ford Foundation, Cresty, and a lot of national foundations, but they've invested money in what they call an idea fund mm -hmm. that goes directly out to $100 million. It goes out to entrepreneurs, artists, and, and other groups. Mm -hmm. But I also think that we have to think about how do we help the individual artists thrive? And the ability today to discover new markets uh, through social media, but it's really hard sometimes to build that audience. Mm -hmm. And when you have a performing arts group, you know, how does that translate where to find a way to bring other income that takes it beyond the community, or at least builds the visibility of what you're doing. You know, and I know Mard does a lot of work in that area, but we still don't have, they don't even have a full-time executive director. I mean, we, we don't put a lot of money behind helping artists become self-sufficient. And we need to figure out how to do that. And I saw a lot because Elmer's been wildly successful with scale up. And he has, you know, companies that will grow by 30% a year mm -hmm. because you help them figure out new markets and then how to address that market. Right. So I keep playing with this in my mind. Can Milwaukee break out of this a little bit by getting by getting out of Milwaukee, basically. <laughs> by not depending on Milwaukee to support it, but depending on other people. Because I often think that we have like these incredible treasures here, like Kofi, mm -hmm. that other people around the world look at it and say, this is amazing. And in Milwaukee, yeah. they say, oh, that's Kofi. Yeah. You know, I mean, we right. just don't get over We have to get over ourselves yeah. a little bit. We get our own way a little bit. That's very true. Um, so, so can I, just, yeah, go just ahead. because, you know, this is not going to end up on the paper, in the paper, and it's just us friends talking. <laughs> We're talking about wild ideas, right? Um, thank you for that shout out, Julia. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see art become an inescapable part of Milwaukee. I would love to see us uh, experience art everywhere. Just, I mean, I wanna be frustrated because you, you can't go somewhere without hearing music and you, you, you can't walk into a space that has more than 10 feet of of open floor without seeing people dance. And every wall has, has artwork on it and uh, people's front lawns have sculptures. And I want us to get to a place where um, we're telling everybody about ourselves in the things that we make. Um, one of the things I'm particularly fascinated about and not very, very few people have heard me live this dream out loud. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about this is uh, cities produce cultural assets, right? And they have extraordinary gravity. So if you go to any city around the world, frankly, and you look at where their art museum is, it's gonna be a really nice area. And you should ask yourself, which one came first? The niceness or the art museum? And I'm gonna say just for a minute that uh, the art museum came first, or the theater came first, or, what, or the galleries came first. And so I'm just gonna say, what if we decided to put uh, some, some spaces where we want niceness to show up uh, on purpose. So I've been dreaming this idea called the Black Art Center for a while. We have big, beautiful buildings with no windows. You know what you don't need windows for? Art, performance, dance, music. So what if we were to just reclaim some of these places? And you know what happens when you have a space where people to come see beautiful stuff? Well, they get hungry. And so they come out and they need something to eat. I thought you was gonna say the police come. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we saw this, this Black Art Center, I was there. I was, I, was on like, I was on like 35th and something. And he was like, what happens? Whoop, whoop, whoop. The, I, the I police was, do come. Sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. Right, it's parallel. Sorry. So, so, so my dream for Milwaukee is really get to a place where uh, you know, our, our creative expression is really part of who we are. Just, you know, 
I'm not from here. I always start with that. I'm not from here. And when people, when I go visit my family uh, in different places on the East Coast, and they say, well, what's Milwaukee like? I want to be able to say, wow, just, you know, it's everywhere. People are shouting from the rooftops. They're just expressing themselves in visual art, performing arts, and music, and everything else. So I think that would catalyze an enormous amount of economic prosperity. And then I'm going to just say it again. We got to spend money on this stuff on purpose. We got to stop asking for hookups. When somebody's giving a concert, when somebody's got a gallery showing, when somebody's making earrings, when they're tie-dyeing shirts, buy it. Yeah. Buy it. Yeah. And that goes back to supporting the individual versus just the brick and mortar development. Absolutely. That, that dollar or that couple dollars of just patronage Absolutely. goes right back to that. And if they charge you $8, don't ask them for a discount. <laughs> Give them 10 There you go. So as we um, sort of get into the Q&A part from, from our, our distinguished audience guests, I just want to take a little bit of everything that was said about like that overview outside of Milwaukee and throw a question out there to you all. And some of you may be able to speak to this, or maybe this is not even interesting. And I'm totally off, and that's totally OK. But I want to ask you in the audience if anybody would be um, knowledgeable enough to help everyone else. Could you describe and maybe define our designated arts areas that exist in Milwaukee? Do you know what they are? Do you know what they call? Do you know where they at? Anybody? You do? Somebody? There's a mic right there. In the There's middle. a lot of things. Okay. Visual arts or other designated districts? Sure. Okay.
He said, have you reached out to Milwaukee Public Television about that particular documentary? That's very uh, true. I wrote something in my notes as I was like two days ago about just the way that it's um, very, you said pop, popping up and it's popular in, a, in an interesting way, um, how art is being ushered out. Artists and the work are being ushered in um, from other organizations and entities that particularly in the past weren't even thinking about art. We're considering um, contracting with artists or bringing artists to a table and, and so it's pretty, it is very interesting um, right now. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and a commodity that could be, that's right. Um, and so, you know, just to backtrack a little bit on your point about a cheerleader, did you all hear all of that just came off the top of her head of awareness of all the arts activities and artists and dates and locations, and that was just off the top of her head. So imagine, you know, if we all had that awareness to be able to share what was really happening in the pulse of the community um, and artists, uh, and how to support artists directly. Um, I think that's awesome. And one other thing I just want to point out, um, and then I'll go into some other questions from the audience, not for you all, but from you all. Um, there was a comment made, Mama Fern said, the crisis of unfulfilled gifts out here, or out there in Neverland. And she said, um, while we build centers of excess over here, there's a crisis of unfulfilled gifts, and then Julia said, and we need places for these gifts. But they don't go anywhere. She didn't say the gifts disappeared, got decimated, destroyed, evaporated. No, she said that we're out there somewhere doing something. And then Elmer said, we need a black art center. We need, we need the container for those gifts. So the solutions come and the, and the, and the analysis is, all the way, is always there. And the formula for success and problem solving is always amongst us. It's not in begging out there somewhere. It is in us learning how to support each other and finding passionate individuals that may not be artists, may not be from 27th and Center, but that still understand the impact of what we're talking about. Um, we're gonna open it up if anybody have any questions after this comment. Sure. Um, I just wanted to shout out True School. Okay. You know, you won't mention that. Um, yeah, I won't mention that. I, won't mention that. <laughs> I know. Uh, cultivating artists, and then also Kothi. My daughter is a member of Tom Kothi, which is Little Kothi, the children's ensemble. And, <laughs> and um, the training, because 
Unfortunately, there are people who may have a gift, but they haven't been trained, they haven't been cultivated, they don't have that consciousness. You know, a lot of people out here, you know, they want to protest, but they don't study, you know, previous movements and leaders and things like that. And that's a very serious issue in this city. And so I just wanted to shout out, you know, what you do and also Kothi because you know, Damar always teaching the youth, always training them, you know, referring to books in Africa. That's important, and a lot of people in the city, unfortunately, don't have that discipline, but they want to jump out front, and we have to be able to pull them back and have examples of excellence, and that they, under, they have to understand they have to go through the training, and they have to earn the stage, they have to earn that platform, and I think that that's something that's missing in the city. There's a good point also in there, um, as Mama Della talked about the cheerleaders. Um, as we all know, there's a multitude and layers and layers and layers of creative talent all around us in Milwaukee. Um, that's part of the reason why there are galleries popping up and there's all these different offers for opportunity or connections regarding the arts. Because everyone knows the talent is definitely here. And a lot of the talent is desperate for opportunity. That's not necessarily specific to one community or ethnic group. A lot of the artists, period, are really hungry for opportunity here. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, Mama Della said, which is an opportunity, it's maybe to some of us who are not necessarily practitioners of arts, but there's a super opportunity to create the business of cheerleading the arts right, right. on a huge scale, yeah. or a small scale, or a mid-scale. Mm -hmm. It's all there. That's just want to put that out there for somebody to go run with that. All right. Um, any questions from the audience? Any, any comments that you may want to offer for us all? OK. And you, just to FYI, you can step up to the mic so people can hear you, or you could just cast your voice.
All right, let's land this plane. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Oh yeah. Oh no. This is this is this is part of shifting that conversation. This gathering right here is part of shifting that conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say something. Yes. Um, that um, really stuck out. That he said um, the child or the young person who says they ain't nothing in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I want to dissect that for a second. Because what the arts do is is reformulate. Let me. Okay. What the arts do is we turn that back and we say, no, you're in Milwaukee and you're something. Therefore, how can there be nothing in Milwaukee if you're something? And the something, the, the path towards the that young person that they are something is a path that comes out of self-realization. It comes out of learning some skill sets. It comes, it comes out of um, feeling a sense of belonging to a community, whereas a lot of our children, they go into a home situation where they don't feel it's a home. And I know at True School, and I know at Kofi, we save a lot of kids' lives. Because for a lot of them, if they, I can think of the amount of young men who at a point in their lives, they felt, I gotta get out of Milwaukee because there ain't nothing in Milwaukee. And my thing to them is that, you know, nothing can follow you anywhere you go. <laughs> so if, if you can get to understand that you are actually something, then no matter where you go, there's always something because you're there because you're there. So it is about skill set, but I just want to share this with you. There's a movie that, um, I can't remember the name of the movie, but there's a, a line in the movie in Switzerland when they were trying to figure out how to move and deal with the Alps. And if you think of the Alps as the mountains that we have to go over and down and maneuver, every day as artists trying to function, um, they just said, well, we need a way to, to get across the mountains. Right? So, but we don't have a train. Don't worry about the train, they said. Let's just build the tracks. Mm -hmm. And this is a true story. They built the tracks before they had the train to go through the Alps. Did y'all know that? Hmm. That blew my mind. That's a, that, that totally blew my mind, because that is so out of the box. Mm -hmm. It's so out of the box. That's what we have to do. That's what I want to see as an elder and an artist in this community, is that it may not be one big, huge building, because then they can just drop a bomb on the building and everybody's gone. I want to see a lot of buildings. I want to see, I want to see uh, uh, Claiborne's thing function. I want to see Kofi have a building. I want to see a lot of buildings, because we got a lot of kids. One building is not going to take care of all of these babies. And I don't want the prison system to become the holding tank for the babies, because that's where we're at right now. Just so you don't think absolutely. I wanted to give you a, a sketch of someplace not Milwaukee that's having a similar issue. Superior, Wisconsin, we're looking at the map. I had a couple kids from Superior in my office, and I said, pull up to the whiteboard, draw me a picture of what Superior 
Interior means to you. Three kids, each one of them, drew a mug of beer. That was how they viewed their community. So you said, wow. there's nothing going on here. Right. There's nothing going on in Superior for those kids as well. Exactly. And so what they came away with was drawing this picture of the mug of beer. One thing to just put in here is maybe a, a project of the future. Mm -hmm. And it is actually a project of the past. Mm -hmm. And that's, we do cultural exchange, right? We, we send people all over the world to do cultural exchange. There's really, I think, a call for cultural exchange within the state of Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah. kids from rural areas, kids from urban areas mixing it up, I think it's going to be very yeah. important. It's the Wisconsin Peace Corps. Okay. <laughs> yep, and that's sort of how we start the conversation from talking about that, that view of statewide assets. Yes. Good evening. One of the panelists mentioned that we often should use the word me instead of we. So I want to just tell you a few things that me <laughs> uh, has done that have increased the interest of our students. One example, a group that I belong to has just set up a scholarship in the arts of $1,000. It's not a lot, but it's a start. Right. And we intend to continue that. Um, also, I belong to a group, I'm very active in groups, <laughs> uh, with Fern. I stand here saying that we were the organization that first presented Fern in the 70s. Right. And so whatever, wherever I am, arts will be a major part of my life. Another example, I'm very thankful for the artists who let you buy work on time or the layaway plan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't always have the money. I collect art by African Americans in Wisconsin. There are artists that let me have art at a lower rate. I gave them a certain amount. I agreed to pay them a certain amount, but I bought it. Mm. And also, there's money in these churches. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why we can't have art galleries in these churches. Yeah. Um, my artwork, I have already willed it to my church. I'm hoping that they will make a gallery and let other members increase that as well. And then finally, I think in terms of wherever we are, whatever committee that we're serving on. And Cheryl is doing a good job over in our district in putting the art out there. But we can do a lot as individuals when we serve on these boards. Don't let them get away with not including the money for arts. That's just as important as the water and whatever. So I think as a citizen, it's important that whenever we serve on boards that we make sure the arts are included in that. So individually, those are just some things that I've tried to do and continue to do uh, in the arts. Oh, and finally, I forgot, uh, we're getting ready to try to produce a film on the Harlem Renaissance because our students don't really know a lot. So I was talking with Julia. We're going to try to do a film. Um, the Harlem Renaissance with a Wisconsin flair. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's what we're doing. Tell us one time where that uh, scholarship rooted at, ma'am. That scholarship. If people want to know how they can support it, the, the scholarship initiative. Uh, beg your pardon? Where's the school at? Where the scholarship? Is that applied to one particular school, or how does the scholarship work? The scholarship. The thousand dollar scholarship. Yeah. Can Fidel and I come over to your house to see your collection? Can, can Fidel and I come, come over to your house to see your collection? After I, the applications themselves, I don't have it. No, no, I want to see your art collection. Oh, yes. Okay. 
I wanted you to say yes on mic, so. Okay. <laughs> it's a deal. Okay. about being patrons of the arts. Mm -hmm. right. We don't talk to yes. them about being collectors of the arts. Yes. We don't talk to them that they could be curators, yes. that they can write about it, yes. they can teach about mm -hmm. the arts. I know I have a niece that's 16 years old. Oh, ever since she was two, I buy her a piece of artwork every year. Now, she says when she goes to college and she finishes her job, She's gonna collect art. She likes going to, you know, going to shows. Even though my great grandson is back there playing on the phone with a game, <laughs> he does understand the arts. Um, yeah, she's talking Matope, about you. Yeah, you. My friend Matope Johnson's daughter. She's getting. She's in college right now. She's getting internships in museums. I think one of the, th and I want you to comment on this. I mean, there's a lot of talk about making the arts but we need to teach our kids and young people how to be the power brokers in the arts. Mm -hmm. We have a young woman, Fatima Laster, who just opened up an art gallery called Five Point, Five Point Art Gallery and Studios, and her focus is on artists of color. Mm -hmm. Color, we need, what, can, what do you suggest we do, to particularly to tell our young people there are other jobs in the arts, there's other ways that you support the arts, and to encourage them to do it. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I want to jump on this one first. Uh, so, for some reason, something happened a few years ago where we started to um, feel uncomfortable with connecting the arts and commerce. Something else happened which I'm even more upset about, which is we started to feel uncomfortable about talking about uh, black folks being wealthy and the pursuit of wealth. So ground zero for all of this conversation is let's reconnect black uh, entrepreneurship and wealth and the arts. So when we stop talking about the pursuit of wealth as a negative or in opposition to being a good citizen uh, uh, or being a patron, if we said, hey, listen, this is an opportunity to amass value, right? And so I'm incredibly fortunate. My mother, um, I, I honestly, I, I talk about it all the time. She had some ideas that I don't know where she got them from. So she decided when I was a very, very little kid, I'm gonna take you to see theater, I'm gonna take you to see dance, I'm gonna take you to see music, I'm gonna take you to the art museum, I'm gonna buy you this little piece of art, I'm gonna buy you this book. <laughs> like, I am so blessed. That said, uh, she was uncomfortable with the idea of thinking about it, about it as value. She, does, she, she never would consider the enormous collections that she shared with me as having a financial value that I can materialize, that I can capitalize on. And I think we need to have that conversation. So I get to spend all day every day talking about how we can grow businesses in this region, knowing that those businesses will create jobs, create investment, and create, oh, by the way, wealth for the owners, employees alike. So I would love to make sure as we talk about patronage that we think about it as a, almost an entrepreneurial endeavor. The same way that you have to look at an opportunity and assess it, this opportunity is valued at this today, but I expect that it will have much more value tomorrow, so I'm going to invest today. I look at artwork the same way. I love this piece of art, and it is worth the money that it's being asked today, but I think a couple days from now, it might be worth even more. And that's okay, because as we buy and we sell, we actually proliferate and we share value. So I would just love to make sure that we, we don't make patronage at odds with wealth creation and, and entrepreneurship. Um, yes, very good. Right. Um, um, I just want to throw in a little tea to reality here. We live in the most segregated city in the United States. That has a watershed and waterfall effect on everything we're talking about today. Because all these things we're talking about, and you were blessed. Yeah. 
children are literally in a school system that has totally emptied out their brain. And so the concepts that we're talking about have to be put back in somewhere, somehow, through some agent that is very, very addictive. Hmm. Because what they are dealing with on the streets every day is addiction. And it's not all about cocaine. It's about the phone, the cell phone. It's all these outside addictions. And the power of the art has to become addictive. And that's going to be the key, is how do we develop to take what we have, because we have to counteract what's going on. So the child, is, and on average, is in the public school system how many hours a week? 35. Seven, eight, well, no, that's 28, 28, yeah, right. They're in school an awful lot of time. Awful lot of time. So we need institutions that my dream, uh, Fidel, would be that we have weekends. I know this is going to sound crazy. Don't all attack me. But we need weekend facilities that were like boarding schools, but they're mm -hmm. art boot camps. <laughs> That's my dream, that they go to a school that we know is not going to really kick their butts in the, the right direction and teach them how to read and write. True school, that's what you're doing after school. But I'm talking about building arts complexes that counteract what the prison system does. So we have some of these old buildings that are sitting around with no, nothing in them. We turn them into only on the weekends. We just take a net and we grab a whole yeah. bunch of kids <laughs> And we, and we just grab them and we go to jail because we just captivated them <laughs> and we put them in a big building that's a boot camp for arts training. You know, um, you just reminded me of something that's pretty, um, it's, it's, we, we won't go to jail, just okay. for the record. Just, uh, that's a great spirit, but you know, that net is the opportunity, that net is, as somebody said, being able to have stipends right. and money for these young people. Right. Um, the net is for us, even before the money, the train tracks before the money is in our collaboration and partnerships. Because yes. you may not have the resources, you may not have the facility for Saturdays, but somebody else in this room does. Yeah, right. We held a um, Saturday, we do a lot of Saturday activations as well, but one of the Saturday activations we did with Chad from Abacus Architects was in the building, was with the urban planning and national organization for minority architecture students, so to, 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 to Brother Allen's point about the built environment and architecture in Milwaukee, um, attaching other things that young artists may think about in order to pipeline them into possible other careers. Maybe it's not selling art, maybe it's not doing art for a living, but maybe it's art applied in another area. So I think that's another critical aspect of the training piece that you said as well, is opening up the options. Um, Art is integrated in every aspect of society. It's just not museum and art and curation and, and culture. It's, it's everywhere. You cannot um, go anywhere without it. And so as we go into this highly technological, fast-paced type of environment, um, we should think about art also in terms of how we mold our young people's minds without killing their dreams and imagination and innovation, but direct those same things into other career pathways and possibilities, entrepreneurship, et cetera. Art saves lives, as the church says. Quickly, I just wanted to uh, ask, what, uh, just two or three points quickly, what is our identity as a art city in Milwaukee? Uh, but more so, um, and I work as an art teacher in the community, so the good or the bad. Mm -hmm. um, but more so, how, I'm asking judges, how do you view um, the visual arts or any of the arts as tools um, for self-expression? 
Great question. That's a great question to wrap this thing up, too. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Because if we're talking about economic prosperity, if we're talking about revitalizing communities, we are talking about justice. So where does art fit in justice, and how do we create the same sentiment in education for art and culture to be used as a tool, a utility for our young people, for our families, for our community in general? That question goes out to any of you all as well, because that's a great question. I think Milwaukee doesn't define itself well, except by institutional <laughs> things in terms of art. Everybody knows about the art museum, but we don't have a, you know, a sense of ourselves as a community of artists which I think is a really big distinction. Yes. And uh, I don't know if anybody's ever been to uh, West Berlin in Germany. You know, this is the part of Germany, of, of Berlin, that goes really uh, kind of left behind economically. And if you go there, that is a community of art. I mean, every wall has got street art on it. At night, these old factories that are abandoned, mm -hmm. they become nightclubs. I mean, mm -hmm. they attract more young people across Europe to that area, they just come because they know it's vibrant, they know mm -hmm. something's happening. It's also a place a lot of artists go mm -hmm. because they know that there's connections. And I, sometimes I look at it and I think, you know, just about anything could be a stage here mm -hmm. or could be right. a pop-up gallery. Mm -hmm. Right. We just have to kind of wrap our heads around it and get people back to, uh, I think it was Della that pointed out, the idea that we can all be consumers of art and we can all be artists. and it's not a, you don't have to achieve a certain thing, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to wait for somebody to come and say, I'm gonna give you a show. Right. You can kind of create a show. Right. And I think if we could get to that point more, um, and also start to get people thinking about being collectors, that you know, you can buy art for the price of a case of beer, right? <laughs> and God knows we buy enough beer in this town. <laughs> we could buy art too. But how do we talk about social justice in art in the most hyper segregated city? There's a, there's a list that is quite ugly about this place, statistically speaking, very, very, very well known nationally and beyond. And a lot of people make a lot of money off of that misery and exploitation and suffering, to be quite honest. How do we, as artists, practitioners, supporters, collectors, et cetera, how do we start the conversation about utilizing the art as a tool to address some of these things was the question, I believe. Just to keep it right there. That's a vital point. So we, got, we got one from the audience. No, we're gonna get one from the audience. We need your feedback. Come to the audience. I mean, come to the mic. on the north side, and some of it's happening, mm -hmm. but, you know, so it's, right. I think we can't forget about that out in the room that, mm -hmm. you know, certain things happen in certain communities, and even though this is the near south side, it's still happening, so, you know, there's some, um, I know the Latina women's group is trying to do some really strong things, and, mm -hmm. and there's some really great artists here, mm -hmm. so how can I, as a white ally, and you as a white ally, support some of that on the north side? So I don't have a uh, suggestion, but there there are things happening within colors of community. It's um, so good. And, and that's part of the conversation to be able to um, come from our different organizations and agencies and be able to offer that that commerce conversation and communication and follow up because of course it's not a conversation that stops today. It, it's something that has to roll on. No.
It's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and that's one of the things, too, as artists, as entrepreneurs, as a community, we got to share our victories. We have to share our victories because sometimes you can drown in the other information that you get. And it may seem like everybody is drowning and losing and suffering, but there are so many great uh, initiatives and organizations doing so many great things. And we can learn a lot from what's already being done. Oh, can I just say, oh, I just wanted to shout out Amar. Um, we worked together last summer and did a mural. Um, he worked with the young people um, from, that were um, through Earn and Learn with Clean Wisconsin. And the mural is on Atkinson and Tatonia. It's 25 feet wide and uh, 20, 12 feet tall. And it's a gateway marker into the historic Garden Homes neighborhood, which was um, envisioned by Mayor Seidel and built by Mayor Holm. Both of their likenesses are on the mural, as well as uh, Garden Homes Lutheran um, Church and things like that. It's beautiful. Go over there and see it. Um, and Amar, of course, you all know he has art, beautiful art throughout this city and many schools. And I just wanted to thank him and to shout him out for that awesome project. We got funding from the city, um, NIDC. You know, they, spon they um, gave us $4,000. They do lots of beautification projects in the neighborhood. Clean Wisconsin, M Work donated the space, you know, that we could work in. So it's a, co it's a collaborative effort that produced a very beautiful um, project that's reminding people of the history of Milwaukee and the Garden Homes neighborhood. And I just wanted to shout them out. Can, can you reveal the, the name? You shouldn't have said the other part then. <laughs> I, I think they should have made you the CEO. I think they should have made you the CEO. I, I said I think it should have been you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it, I think, yeah. I think it, I think it could have been a good compliment. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? <laughs> Retire? What? We'll, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Yo, replacement walking around here. Uh, Jamila at the front door. Hey. <laughs> I wanted to say something about uh, two things. Number one, I think that we, our terminology has to change in terms of how we refer to our young people today. I stopped using the word at risk in my grants and applications because I don't believe that any child of color or any child in the United States is actually at risk. The, the seniors are at risk because if we don't get the kids engaged, we're seriously at risk. The world is at risk. And I think that those terms like that, kids being referred to as at risk, it follows them everywhere they go and it sets a mental attitude right away. And the other thing I wanted to say is that I think that the TV program on 1036, Black Nouveau, the fact that their hours have been cut and that it's questionable whether it will be around much longer is a serious problem for what we're talking about. Because that show, we artists need to figure out a way to take over that show. Because that show was a really important uh, um, uh, opportunity to highlight every single week something that was going on in the arts in this community that a lot of times I didn't even know about. It became this visual newsletter, which in today's world, nobody's reading newspapers anymore. So 
So here was a TV show that was centered around black art. And, and it's, it's, they're gradually cutting its hours out. Mm -hmm. and, and how many times it shows on air. Yeah. And I think that's a problem. Well, it goes back to my, the last thing I want to say, mm -hmm. we, all these things we're talking about are very important, but we cannot ignore the issue of race in this town. It affects everything that we're talking about. That's right. Absolutely. Because a black kid with a gym bang that's powerful is a threat. A black kid with a poetic voice that can write some serious poetry is a threat to some people. Mm -hmm. And to some of these some people, they happen to control a lot of the purse strings in this mm. town. So, I mean, I'm speaking from 50 years of experience in Milwaukee, and I'll leave you with this. When I go to a millionaire in this city, who happens to be a white millionaire, and, went with, and I went with this huge, beautiful, laid out package, took us hours and months to put together for him, and made the presentation to him, and when we finished, he looked me dead in the eye and sat for a minute, and then he said, what has this got to do with me? And I was so stunned, and I wish this had happened when I was the age I am now, because I would have had the answer for him. But then I was young, and it blew my mind. But that's, he's not the only one with that mentality. It's what does what you do have to do with me? And I'm a white male millionaire, live in the suburbs, I build buildings. What is what you do? with those black kids with the gym bays have to do with me. So that, you know, that is something that we have to like figure out how to answer, how to, how to express that. For the answer is this. Mm -hmm. Talent is like a forest. Mm -hmm. We're gonna grow up the forest with the kids of the forest. Right. If we don't nurture the forest, it's like a clear cut forest. Yep. And so if we're gonna harvest One gentleman who runs an ad agency said, I need to hire a uh, creative person, an African American guy from Detroit. He looked at Milwaukee and said, Not going. Uh -huh. For the very reason mm -hmm. that you described. Mm -hmm. right. So, ha having that said, I mean, I, we don't want to have an ecological crisis, mm -hmm. we don't want to have a cultural crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what we're talking about. But going back to what was asked before, is there a one thing that Milwaukee can call itself for, for the arts, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. But from the artist's perspective, that's a blank canvas. Yes. And so we need to look at the blank canvas mm -hmm. as something we can paint on that's right. different yeah. than what has yes. been. Um, yes. And I think the creativity of this group, the understanding of the social justice mm -hmm. issues, but also knowing the way forward is going to be crucial. Yep. Yeah. And so, once again, thank you all for coming today. We could go on to the sun come down and beyond about this particular topic. You all wouldn't be here if this was not something that was passionate to you and if it was very important to you on this beautiful day. So once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your creative insights. Please connect with somebody in this room that you were not connected with before. And make sure you go home and tell everybody or go on your things, your devices, and tell everybody about this conversation today that's happening. That's part of it. If none of us leave this place and don't talk about what happened today, then we, what, what are we doing, right? So you all have a lot of influencers in your networks. If you don't share this information about what was happening here today, are you part of the solution really? Or are you just a spectator? Just, just asking for a friend who's not here today, who would love to be here and find out more information about it. All right, I'm done. Thank you all. Hold on, before you leave, before you leave, I just want to say that the 30th Street Corridor, Amani Metcalf Park, Sherman Park, that is our goal. Our goal is to build Black Wall Street in Milwaukee, okay? So we want our friends and allies, but first we got to circulate our black dollars here and build our community. 
we can do a whole lot if we just do that coming together ourselves. Um, but I also want to end with Mama Fern. We want to sing happy birthday to Kothi on the way out. That's too much, Mama? That's, that's Let's do it. You got cake. That's a lot. That's good. <laughs> so let's everybody stand, please. Tell them to take some cake. And we got to take some cake and some food. You, wanna, you, you got the voice, right, Elmer? Let's do the Stevie Wonder. Oh, we want it first. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Come on, Demar. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you to our panel. Thank you all so much. We got cake back there, so have some cake. Yes. And we do have your contact information. If you didn't sign in, please sign in because we are going to continue the conversation. We will continue to have conversations. Uh, take an envelope, write a check, mail in a check, drop in some cash. Um, please, please, please uh, support Kothi Dance Company. Thank you.